Hi, welcome back to Danny Harris Arts. In this part three segment of the Rainbow Trout Wood Carving Project, I'm gonna be burning the scales on, mounting the eyes, and fixing the little gaps between the fans and the body that didn't quite fit right. And then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna have Josh Googie come by, and he's gonna give me a critique of the fish up to this point. So I hope you stick around to the end for that. So let me get the camera turned around here and get started. Okay, I'm using a, no, a two millimeter scale tip that I got from Razor Tip. Uh, it's a tiny little tip. And I make a lot of my own, but this one works out great for this one. It's almost the exact size that the scales would be for this size trout. This is about eight hours of work just for this side here. And on this side, I decided to burn the lateral line scales in first and uh because it's easier to keep up with the lateral line especially when i get ready to put the nerve endings on each line for the lateral line uh, and down here you can see when i wrapped around from the other side i kind of went in a little zigzag pattern and uh instead of a straight that kind of helps it blend in uh, better from this side Once I get all the scales burned on, I go over them with a uh, piece of sandpaper. Here I'm using a uh, kind of a medium coarse fingernail file. It's padded and it just knocks down the rough edges, the crisp edges of the scale uh, that where it was burned on. And it uh, just, just kind of smooths it out. Then I go over it with a uh, kind of a medium grit scotch brite pad. And uh, what that does, it takes out some of the char and it smooths it down a little further. You can see the dust flying off it if you look. And it's just kind of the char. That'll help the seal it, go in it better. And here you can get a better view of the lateral line coming through here. Put on the little nerve edges on the end of those. I have to turn that fan off for a second right here myself think. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, um, is I'm gonna glue all the fans on. And, uh, and I'm just gonna be using super glue. I started using super glue a while back. Um, the way I was taught to do it, to do it <laughs> the way i was taught to do it was using auto bondo and that's just a big mess to me um, it works but this uh extreme power thick super glue it works it ain't coming out the wood will break before it comes out so um that's what i'm that's what i've been using that's what josh used in the class so that's what I'm gonna use on here. So I'm just, I've already pre-fit it. So I'm just gonna spread it out here all over. Like I say, this is the thick. Um, I, I think it holds better than the thin. And I'm just gonna hold it in place here just for a second till it kicks. And then I do have some accelerant I'm gonna spray on it. And it's in there, it ain't going nowhere. I did have a little bit better fit on this side to the body than I did on this side, but I will be blending that fan in to the body with 
with epoxy sculpt uh, after I've, I've sealed it. So refit this one here just to make sure. Make sure you do pre-fitting before you stick that fin in there because once it's in there, it's there. Accelerant. That's done. Let's do the... Get better at fit and finish than these fins. Uh, I still got some work to do on it, um, but I've come a long way since I've started carving. I used to have a heck of a time getting it to look right. But I'm slowly but surely getting it. I need to make me a little fish cradle with foam on it. I see taxidermists using it, and I've seen a few wood carvers using them. I'll do that at some point. One of the things I noticed on some trout was that this fin angle here sometimes it it can be back I'll show you here sometimes it can be back folded against the body and a, a trout can do that and it looks like the fin muscle is at an angle like this but other pictures I've seen I think they can rotate that muscle that fin however they want so this is how I did it, that's how it was done in the class, so it's also how I done it. I kind of got worried about that for a while I was looking at them. I already had the slots cut for this one. And then I saw some where it looked like it was angled and then I started seeing others that it wasn't, so I didn't get worried about it as much then. and they're on there. I mean, they, they're not going anywhere. Once that super glue kicks, it's there. All right, I'm gonna let that super glue set for a few minutes just to make sure that it's hardened. And then I'm going to seal it using a mixture of lacquer and lacquer thinner mixed um 50 50. so and what mixing it thin does is it lets it absorb into the wood faster and and seals it all faster 8291 scales <laughs> all right let me get the sealing out and i'll get right back Okay, so all I'm doing is just regular old lacquer thinner, and I'm just mixing it about half and half. It doesn't take a whole lot. We got a little measurements here on the cup. This is a uh, lacquer. This is oil-based lacquer, and I'm just using satin. It doesn't really matter because it's going to be absorbed and covered up. And 
Let's give it a good stir here. Remove anything plastic. And I just use little cheap disposable foam brushes. And you see that just soaks right into that wood and it seals it up nice. And I usually only do one coat. I don't think it's necessary to do multiple coats on it. It goes on pretty thin. And it soaks, I mean, it soaks right into the wood. It's like 101 here in Arkansas today. So this is gonna, this is gonna dry pretty quick. All right. I'm gonna set that in the sun and it'll be Baked on goodness here in a minute. Got that sign. So, then once it dries, I'm gonna mount the eyes, and then uh, then it'll be ready for gesso. Okay, so what I'm about to do now is I'm going to mount the eyes, and I'm gonna fix the little. Uh, gaps in the fins where it didn't quite fit down quite uh, to the body and um, just a couple of them are, are, are that I need to fix um, so but I'm gonna do a little thin line all the way around to uh, just to blend it into the body Okay, um, I am ready to mount the eyes. I've gone over the the, uh, the segment of that course again. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I've done this before. Um, the only difference is I'm not using glass eyes. I am using the eyes that I made. Um, and if you'll check out the video, I've got a video and I'll put a link up here for that. Uh, but it shows how I make these. I'm not gonna go into how I make them now, but you can see they're made with uh, they're just made out of wood, and then I use epoxy and, and I hand paint them. So uh, check that video out. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna be doing the same thing he's doing. He's using a different um, epoxy uh, set for his. Um, I use, I've got epoxy sculpt, uh, which is similar to his. Uh, it's a two part uh, epoxy putty. And I've, I've gone over this some, on uh, some of my other videos as well and uh, it works well um, I liked what he was using it's a, it seemed to be a little thinner and it had a longer set time than this epoxy sculpt uh, once you get this mixed together you got about 20 or 30 minutes before it uh, before it sets up to where you can't work it anymore um, but uh, so what I'm going to be doing is, of course, setting the eyes, but I've also got some places where the fins didn't quite fit right. I mean, so there's a little bit of a gap there. And, um, and Josh talks about that in a critique that I'm going to show you on the next, on, in part three. Um, but I've got a little gap here, and it's just where I did, there wasn't quite, there's just a little bit of irregularity, so it didn't quite fit in tight. It's good on this side, and on this one, it's good on this one. And the, um, 
the pelvic fans look good and the pectoral fans need a little bit of work as well so i'm going to be doing that and then and setting the eyes so i think what i'm going to do first is uh work on the the gaps on the fins so um and what i'll do is i'll take a little piece it's two parts and i'll take a little piece out i'm gonna work it a little bit at a time so i don't uh, just try to get equal length sizes. I don't know which one is the hardener. I don't know if it says on here or not. I think the white, the lighter color is the hardener. I think, I'm not sure. But you just, you wanna get them close to the same amount. And the best way for me to do that is I roll it out into a little little um, small rope like that and it lets me see it's easier to gauge how much I don't know if you can see that or not it's easier to see that I've got just a little too much there so I'll take that off put that back on there but uh, I roll these out to longer thinner ropes and I, I got a glass of water here because you can smooth this stuff down with water on your finger I've got a couple brushes that I'll use I've got some uh, small sculpting tools here that I'll use to set them so I'm gonna do this first but what I do is I roll them out into long thin ropes and you can do this any way you want but I like to twist it up Get it all twisted. And then twist it again. And it's just, it just gets you a good start on mixing it. Um, you want it to be uh, thoroughly mixed with no, no marbling at all. You want it to be one solid color. So I just twist it together I'll do that a couple times until I don't see any more marbling in there I know you you can't see that on camera but I can see it here in person so I'll keep doing it till it's gone till it's a smooth uniform color Josh, the eyes Josh used, I think he painted himself, but they were, I'm pretty sure they were uh, Tohican glass eyes. And that's the eyes I used to use was from Tohican. Um, but they're just so generic. There's, um, there's, there's no life, I mean, there's no life to them. Uh, watch that video that I've got and you'll see what I'm talking about. I go into depth and explain it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll out a nice thin rope of it here. And then I'll take it, I don't know if you can see that gap, there's a little bit of gap there. I'm just gonna lay it across there. And this has already been sealed too, so the water I'm gonna use on it's not gonna hurt anything. So I'll just dip my finger down in there. And smash that down into the peel and then use one of my little tools here. Just smash it down good. And I probably used a little too much. It should have been a little bit thinner on there. And then I've got these brushes, they're stippling brushes, and they're real stiff. You can't, I know you can't tell it on camera, but they're a real stiff brush. And, uh, and it really lets you get down in there and get that smoothed out. 
get it blended in with the body. And then I've got a, a uh, softer one here to kind of smooth it out. And that's all it takes. And I got a little spot on the front of the fin here where I accidentally hit it with the uh, with the bit when I was uh, carving the, the fins and uh, put a little groove in it. I don't know if you can see that. But I knew I could fix it with this stuff. Okay, so I've gone around all the fins that needed, that had the little gaps and fixed the, uh, fixed the gaps. And uh, just around the pectoral fins and anal fins, all the way around the uh, dorsal fin. So now I'm getting ready to uh, start wearing on the eyes. Sorry, I forgot to push record on this, but there's a little bit on the other side that I'll show you here. But I've already got some of the epoxy sculpt in the gap between the eye and the eye socket. And right now I'm just using these little tools that I bought at Harbor Freight uh, that are perfect for this kind of work to uh, shape and form it around the eye to form the sclera or the eyeball. And then I'll use some water and a brush to smooth it out. Here's the eye out. I want that pupil to be facing forward, the little skinny part. I want it to be horizontal and facing forward. So what I'll do now is I'll just make a couple of, uh, make a little ball that I can put in behind the eye and then, then I'll adjust, put the eye in and adjust it to the angle I want. Okay, so I've got the other eye set. I'm just making sure they're aligned straight, making little fine adjustments. I want them to be looking down and forward slightly. So I'll use this thin little rope with a epoxy sculpt I made to start filling in around the eye socket and the eye. And then I use the little tools to kind of mash it into place, work it in, and just start building it up to form that uh, eyeball, that sclera of the eyeball. Okay, uh, Josh was going to critique this for me via uh, FaceTime, but we couldn't get the audio to work right, so what he's done is uh, he is videotaped one and sent it to me. I sent him a bunch of photos and uh, he looked it over real well and then uh, he recorded a uh, critique for me and uh, so I'm going to play that now.
Hey, Danny, how you doing? Josh Googie here from my studio in Elgin, Illinois. Uh, thanks for having me on here to uh, give you a little critique on uh, where your sculpture's at right now, your fish sculpture at this time. It's looking, uh, it's looking really good. Um, I did write down a few notes here about, uh, about your fish as I've been looking at the, uh, the pictures and videos that I've seen of it. Um, first of all, I wanted to tell you, you're doing a great job. Uh, the fish looks good. You know, one of your strengths, I think, is your, your craftsmanship. The fish is nice and clean. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of good transitions in the, in the fish from uh, where the scales meet the tail. Um, and where they meet the, uh, the fins. I think one of the strong points about the fish um, is, is also the scaling. The scaling looks great. Um, from far away, it just looks like a black, a black mess. And I know that that part of the uh, process was probably uh, crazy for you, putting on you know thousands and thousands of scales, most likely. Um, I know you did a larger size fish than we did in the class. But it looks like you, you spent the attention you needed to and took your time um, burning in each, each scale, which was a little different than what we did. We rolled them on because um, we were looking for more of a quicker, generic way of, of just getting the scales on the fish. Um, and there's different ways of doing it. The way you did it is, is a little more realistic, so I commend you on uh, the time and effort it took you to, uh, to get that done. Um, so yeah, your, your craftsmanship overall looks really nice. Um, the movement of the fish, the locomotion in the fish um, looks nice, and your, your fin movement looks good. Um, a couple things I would work on. One thing is I would add more splits into your fin edges, the outside of your tail, the outside of all your fins. I would get some deeper splits. You can do that with a um, carving tool. You can, you can do that with a, um, like, a, like a stone, a disc and break it up like we did in the class. Or you can take a wood burner in, in low heat and just kind of burn the edges of those fins a little bit more to get more of a natural, um, realistic fish look. Fish are gonna be beat up in the water. They're gonna have bigger splits. Anyone who's ever caught a fish knows that you'll see that on the real fish. So it's something you can still add at this point even though your fish is sealed to, to add a little more um, realism to it before you paint. Um, the other thing that I notice is that you have little gaps between where, where you've mounted the, the fin into the fish, okay? So where the scales are meeting the, uh, the fins, there should be more of a nice blending or transition into that fin from the fish's body, and you don't want any kind of gap. If you can, if you can rub your fingernail across the top of that body and your fingernail gets stuck, in a gap between the fin and the body, that means you have a gap. And I would recommend doing that with a fingernail or, or a, um, a little tool or something, a knife, to, to, feel, to see if you feel that, because sometimes you can't see that gap just by looking at it, um, especially with all that dark burn and everything going on there, it's hard to, to see it. But I would fill it in with an epoxy of your choice and smooth it out really good, sand it out, and then prepare um, the fish to paint. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing your, your fish all finished, uh, painted, and uh, ready to go with, with eyes in it. So looking forward to, uh, to seeing that. And hopefully this helped you and uh, looking forward to uh, speaking with you soon. Thanks a lot, bye. Okay, that's gonna be it for part three of this rainbow trout wood carving project. Got everything done, scales, the eyes, and fins fixed. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned or not, but these eyes are eyes that I make. And uh, I'll leave a link up here somewhere to the video showing that process. So go check it out if you, uh, if you get time later. Uh, I also wanna thank Josh Googie for coming by to uh, give me a critique on this. Uh, it really means a lot to me that he took time out of his busy schedule to come in and uh, and do this for me. Um, I always, I've learned a lot during this series and I've still got the painting to go. And uh, he's got several videos on that that I gotta catch up on and do. So I'll be doing that as well. Uh, he's also gonna come by at the end of, the, of, the, of this series and give me another critique on the finished piece. So, um, but I appreciate y'all watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them for me in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing. 
and I will see y'all on part four. Thank you.